Hey guys. Okay, I'm back. Um, this is going to be a video about transitioning. Um, when I did my product video, I told you guys that I was going to talk about my transitioning experience so far. Okay, first I'm going to start off, um, again, I started transitioning June 25, 2008, and I have no intentions on big chopping, and my reason for that is I've had short hair before, and I'm trying to grow it long, so being natural really isn't my goal as far as like my number one goal. First, I want to achieve overall health. Second, I want to achieve length. Then third will be natural. So, um, if I have to transition for two years, it's fine. Um, when I feel like I'm comfortable with a certain length, then I'll go ahead and cut off my relaxed ends. But till then, they're going to stay there until they dwindle away. <laughs> okay? So, um, I wrote down a list of things so I'll stay on topic because I, my camera only lets me record like 10 minutes. But let me go ahead and get started. Um, first, um, let's start off with the type of styles that I did when I first started transitioning. Um, I had about, maybe like three months in, I had like maybe a half an inch to, a, maybe an inch and a half of new growth. So, roll setting wasn't a big deal because I've always had shoulder length since, from, since I cut my hair. It's always been shoulder length, it never went past. It might be like right here, a little past shoulder length, but it never got down my back. And part of that was because I wasn't retaining length, but now I know what to do. Um, but yeah, I will roller set it. Um, I will use the red medium sized rollers and I will use the red magnetic rollers, specifically those particularly. And um, sometimes in the summer I will let it air dry because it will be so hot out here and I will be sweating so I will just let it air dry versus sitting under the dryer and continuing to sweat and not letting my scalp breathe. But um, in the winter I would roller, in my roller set it, I would sit under a hooded dryer. Um, secondly will be Bantu knots. Um, Bantu knots and I were like this when I first started transitioning. <laughs> Um, I kind of don't do them too much right now because um, I'm really in a braid up now, but in wigs. This is my new wig, y'all. This is Otto. Cute. Okay, but. <laughs> um, where was I going with this? See, this is why I wrote it down. Oh, yeah, Bantu Nuts. Bantu Nuts. Um, so, yeah. Then I did um, braid up. Braid up is what I'm really into now. Um, I'll do a braid out and I'll style it. So. Basically, you braid your hair in little plaits, and then you throw rollers on the end. Um, in Bantu knots, you would take the hair and you would coil it all the way around to a little knot. And then you would secure it with a, when you secure it on its own, wrapping your hair around the, um, the knot. Or you would use a bobby pin. Or you would use like a little itty bitty um, uh, fabric rubber, fabric hair bow, a f fabric hair band. Not a plastic one with a metal clip, but you know, the outlet, the goodies outlet headbands, I guess. And um, then, of course, wigs. In sew-ins, I did one sew-in, my Bohemian Curl, which I love. And I still got four packs of hair in my closet now. I just haven't had the patience or the time to take it down and do it. Because it was like a five, six hour process. Um, and then the Twist and Curl, the Curly Nikki, the infamous Curly Nikki and Twist and Curl. Which you would basically do two strands with your hair and then uh, roll it with a rod to create like a spiral curl effect. And that, I did that for a long time. I actually ended up creating so many different hairstyles with that. Some of them I didn't even put on YouTube yet. But when next time I do that, I'll go ahead and do some more hairstyles. But those like my, let me see, four main hairstyles I would do. Roller sets, fancy knots, braid outs, and twists and curls. And then the wigs and sew-ins were far and few between. Um, secondly, my regimens I, I would do. Um, I only shampoo my hair every other week. So twice a month, my hair would get shampooed with like a conditioner. I do not use sodium lower sulfate shampoo. Um, I use the Commit Biologics tea, um, Egyptian tea grass cleansing tea, I think that's what it's called, and that's a clarifier. So I will clarify once, and then I will use a moisturizing shampoo, probably Carol's daughter. Um, the other, the next time I will shampoo. So, um, but conditioner washing, I will use Suave, uh, Tropical Coconut, Herbal Herbal Essences is like that's what I'm really into right now. I mean I. Which is so many different hair products that are funny. But now I found what works for me. What works for me. So, hey, you know, go figure. Um, next would be deep conditioning. Even if I if I co-washed, I would still deep condition with the plastic cap under a hood dryer for at least 15 minutes. Or if I didn't have time to sit in the dryer, I like if I had 
to like dart out the door, do what I have to do. I put the plastic cap on, put the, like the little wig cap on top of it, and throw my wig on and go do what I have to do for the day. And I'm deconditioning under my wig. And because it's been the winter time, it's been fine. It hasn't been too hot. Um, now that it's getting hotter, I'm going to have to find something new to do or, <laughs> or just like, I don't know. But deconditioning is really important. Um, if you look at my hair products video, it's two parts, one and two. You will see the different deep conditioners I would use. Any of the conditioners I showed you, you can like use as deep conditioners. Doesn't matter. Because your hair is going to absorb what it wants to absorb anyway. Um, so deep conditioning and cold washing, those two are important. Then oils. Um, I would suggest you use oils that penetrate the hair shaft and moisturize from the inside out. And two oils that I know that do that are coconut oil, unrefined coconut oil, and extra virgin olive oil. And use oils to seal. So say you moisturize your hair at night, you want to make sure you seal your ends with an oil um, to keep them moisturized. And that's how you retain length. Okay, because um, a lot of, you know, I don't know if you guys did this, but before I learned how to properly take care of my hair, I would just get some moisturizer and put it on my hair. And that was it. Not worry about my ends. You know, so my ends were looking raggedy, but the, the hair shaft was all smooth. And I was wondering when I would do a flat iron, why these ends were always frayed. Because I never moisturized them. Even though I thought I was doing a good job. You know, concentrate more on your ends because they are the oldest part of your hair. Well, the oldest, yeah, the oldest part of your hair. So, um, moving on. Um, I try to use... Um, products that don't have any parabens or mineral oil, because mineral oil, it doesn't do you any justice. It doesn't moisturize, it just coats your hair. Petroleum, all that good stuff, it, or all that bad stuff anyway, in my opinion, it's just not necessary. Um, parabens, like a wax, I, like I said, coats, doesn't moisturize. So I try to stay away from ingredients that, products that have the ingredients in it. Um, then moisturizing, moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. You know, people always say moisturize your skin, your neck, your hands, your body. You have to moisturize your hair. So, um, I use shea butter or, um, look at my product video again. I'll use what Carol's daughter, that before I discovered Oyen Handmade and then Kemet Biologics, all these different products, the Amelin Olive Heavy Cream, I use that to moisturize, but... Yeah, you need a moisturizing product. And hair product video again, you see I have plenty. Um, thirdly, I want to talk about the three things that you have to have in order to properly to take care of your hair. If you're transitioning, if you're relaxed, if you're already natural, these like these three things that you have to have. First, you have to set a goal. Um, my goal is health, length, and then natural naturalness. And I, in my opinion, I think health should be your number one goal in, in general. Whatever whatever you're doing with your hair right now, if it's relaxed or tech flax or natural or transitioning, you have to keep health first. Then all the other stuff comes later. Okay? So um, next, I want um, people to understand that when you take care of your hair, it's a lifestyle change. You have to change what you're eating. You have to change your, um, your habits as far as like... I know for me, I have to start exercising more. I changed the way I ate, um, and then I changed the way how I took care of my hair. So it really took me getting into a routine to understand that if I wanted to grow my hair, if I wanted to grow it, if I wanted healthy, I would have to create this lifestyle change. So no soda. <laughs> I had to cut out potatoes. I Lord, I had to cut out candy and chocolate. Honey, you might love some chocolate. Whew, I had to cut out chocolate and... um. That thing, those things weren't even good for me anyhow, but it's a lifestyle change. And lastly, or maybe first, you have to have patience. It's not going to grow overnight. There's no growth aid in the world that's going to make your hair grow like that. There's not. Um, though growth aids do help in um, stimulating the scalp and stimulating the hair follicles to help them produce what I'm trying to say. Scratch that. But yeah, the, <laughs> the growth aids do help and stimulate your scalp to increase um, hair growth and fullness of your hair. But you have to do it daily. You have to stick to your regimen. You have to stick to your routine. So if you're not used to having a routine, you have to do a lifestyle change, get on a routine, and then, you know, create your regimen as you go. But patience is key. Like, when I first started, I was like, oh my gosh, I was checking my hair every month, every month. This is, has it grown an inch? Has it grown half an inch? Has it grown a quarter of an inch? And then,